Hey there! I'm author Sarah A. Chrisman, and today I'm going to share some footage that my husband and I took recently when we visited Hannibal, Missouri, the hometown of Mark Twain. Sarah Josepha Hale, the editor of the popular Victorian magazine Goody's Ladies Book, once declared that every new book must have a private history. In these videos, I try to show you the private histories of my own books, and anyone interested in sources and further readings can explore them even more fully through the book's appendices. Recently, Gabriel and I had the opportunity to explore the private histories behind some of America's most famous Victorian literature when we visited Hannibal, Missouri, the boyhood home of Mark Twain and the inspiration for some of his most famous scenes in The Adventures of Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn. Sam Clemens, who would later take up the pen name of Mark Twain, was born in a small town a few miles outside of Hannibal. His hometown had the confusing name of Florida, Missouri, and at the time of young Sam's birth had a population of only 100 people. With characteristic braggadocio, he later bragged about having increased the town's population by a full 1% when he arrived, and Florida, Missouri still enshrines the birthplace of its most famous son. The Clemens didn't stay there long, though, and when Sam was still a boy, the family moved to a town on the Mississippi constantly visited by steamboats, a town whose lumber mills were fed by rafts of logs floated downriver from the forests of Wisconsin and Minnesota, and where the nearby hills were riddled with elaborate caves just begging to be explored. The town of Hannibal would ultimately provide a wealth of inspiration for Sam, but in terms of cash money, his family wasn't exactly flush. They did have their own house for a while, a relatively modest place which had a tremendous impact on Sam's imagination. It still stands in Hannibal as Mark Twain's boyhood home and museum, and the inspiration for Tom Sawyer's house. It even has a section of fence outside for visitors to whitewash. There's an entry fee to visit the museum, but luckily on the day we visited, Tom wasn't around to make us pay him for the privilege of whitewashing his fence. By and by, financial difficulties forced the Clemens out of the home which had so inspired young Sam, and they all moved into a small space above a pharmacy owned by a local doctor. This pharmacy has also become a museum. Just don't repeat Tom Sawyer's wickedness and give your painkiller to your cat. The cat will not appreciate it, and this was one of the few instances from his own wild childhood which Twain later expressed remorse over when he wrote his autobiography. He loved cats. Just a hop, skip, and a jump away from Mark Twain's boyhood home is the home of Tom Blankenship. Sam's real-life childhood friend, who he later used as the model for Huckleberry Finn. In Twain's autobiography, he reported, quote, In Huckleberry Finn, I have drawn Tom Blankenship exactly as he was. He was ignorant, unwashed, insufficiently fed, but he had as good a heart as ever any boy had, unquote. Fans of the rapscallion Huck Finn will be tickled to hear that his original went west and ultimately became a justice of the peace in Montana. Not only was Huck Finn based on a real boy, Becky Thatcher was based on a real girl, Laura Hawkins. Laura Hawkins was Sam Clemens' first sweetheart back when he was just seven years old and she was five. Visitors to the Mark Twain Museum complex today can hear a radio broadcast of Laura Hawkins speaking as Becky Thatcher in 1926, when she was 89 years old. Some of the spookiest and most evocative scenes in Tom Sawyer's story happen when Tom and Becky get lost in a cave and encounter a cloud of bats, then have to hide from a murderer. When I read this scene as a child, I had next to no experience with real caves. On beaches, I'd seen wave-worn depressions in rocks, and while hiking, I'd seen big stones leaning against each other in a configuration that might provide a minimum, minimum of shelter to a truly desperate contortionist. 
But the caves of Missouri are truly something else, of a different order of magnitude. Mark Twain's cave and the nearby Cameron Cave are labyrinthine wonderlands full of twists, turns, secret passages, and roosting bats. The famous robber Jesse James once hid out in Mark Twain's cave, and in the cave's heyday, many visitors left their names on the rock, including Sam Clemens himself. This ceased to be allowed when the cave was given historic landmark status in the 1970s, but besides all its other amazing attributes, Mark Twain's cave is the coolest variant on an autograph book that I have ever seen. Sam Clemens left his mark on Hannibal, but even more than that, the town of Hannibal, Missouri left its mark on him. All of an author's experiences come out in our books in one way or another. Reading a book is the very best way to meet the author and spend time with them, get their advice, and live their experiences. Thank you for watching today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a nice thumbs up and remember to tell your friends about my books. Happy reading!